Few would argue that Germany produced some of the most impressive and innovative tanks of the Second World War. Coupled with the expertise and skill of tank generals such as Field Marshal Erwin Rommel and Heise Guderian, Germany's tank forces during World War II have etched themselves an unviable place in the annals of military history, being defeated mostly by the sheer of weight of numbers the Allies could hurl against them. In the final years of the war, numbers were always against the Germans, and this led them to developing bigger and better tanks, with which to confidently take on large numbers of enemy forces. This culminated in one of the most incredible tanks in history, the awe-inspiring Panzer VIII Mouse, known affectionately as the Mouse, but this was anything but small and cute. On the contrary, had the Germans managed to get the vehicle beyond the prototype stage, it would have been an unstoppable monster, the largest tank in history. Before we take a look at this incredible tank, we'd like to say thank you to Wargaming for sponsoring this video. When Wargaming isn't sponsoring us, it's giving us the chance to become a tank commander, and now it's your chance. World of Tanks has been totally redesigned, so new players and old players alike will have something brand new to enjoy. It's considered one of the most beautiful free-to-play PC games, and we're sure you'll agree that the epic music, sounds, and different maps demonstrate this. Enter the World of Tanks with your very own premium tank, 500 gold, 7 days premium, and a range of boosters when you use our invite code below. Take on the competition, take to the tanks. Click on the link in the description or in the comments to get started. The Mission Germany's Blitzkrieg in Poland and Western Europe at the start of the war was successful in no small part to the effectiveness of their tank forces. They blasted holes in enemy lines through which they could break through and then either circle back to surround them, isolating an enemy formation to make them easier to destroy or alternatively, race to capture key strategic objectives such as airfields and bridges. The success of such operations was never lost on the Germans, as the war dragged on, but the problem by 1942 was that the Allies were now fully geared up for war and had bigger and better defences than in 1939. Germany had good tanks in the form of the Panther, Tiger I and King Tiger, but they envisioned an even greater, super-heavy tank that could blast through the thickest of enemy lines and allow the smaller, medium and heavy tanks to pour into the enemy's rear where they could wreak havoc. The amount of armour and firepower such a tank would require necessitated the designing of a colossal tank unlike any other in history. When the design was finalised, it weighed a gargantuan 188 tonnes. Propulsion. Propelling such a phenomenally heavy vehicle was one of the biggest obstacles facing the design team. The initial engine was a variant of the 44.5 litre Daimler Benz DB603 V12 aero engine, which powered some of Germany's night fighters, such as the DO217N. This was later changed to a more powerful MB517 that was rated at 1200 horsepower in the second prototype. The engine was coupled to an electric generator that powered two electric motors mounted in the upper rear of the tank that were then connected to the immensely wide tracks. Each one of the tank's tracks were 1.1 meters wide and featured 24 road wheels in six sets. Despite all of this, the tank was never able to travel more than 12 miles per hour during testing. This means that in an operation scenario, the crew would have to rely on overwhelming firepower and the heavy armour to tackle any opposition. It would also make it very difficult to retreat if it found itself in an unfavourable position. For reference, the American M26 Pershing heavy tank could achieve 30 miles per hour on a flat road, although it must be remembered that it was less than a quarter of the weight of the mouse. Protection. Because it was expected to take very heavy enemy fire, the mouse was afforded substantial armour protection. The forward hull and turret, which would bear the brunt of hostile fire when advancing on an enemy defensive line, had armour over 222mm in thickness. This was nearly twice the thickness of the Tiger I tank, which proved extremely difficult for the Allies to destroy, and this gives an idea of just how difficult a mouse would have been to stop, even when faced against a numerically superior foe. 
If that was not enough, the forward armor's effectiveness was greatly increased thanks to its heavily sloped design. Sloped armor increases the depth of metal a shell has to pass through to destroy a tank, compared to vertical armor. It can also deflect the shells fired at it when hit at certain angles. The mouse's weakest armor was at the rear, but even this was 30mm thicker than the most armored section of a Tiger I. The exceptionally heavy armor and subsequent weight came at a price however, and not just in its very slow speed. At 188 tons, there were few bridges that the mouse could cross safely without risking it collapsing. It also had to have a specifically designed 14-axle railcar, intended to disperse the weight of the mammoth vehicle so the tracks were not crushed. Firepower During the course of the war, the armour on tanks grew exponentially, and the tank guns used in 1939 were rendered ineffective by 1945. Therefore, as armour increased in size, so too did the guns. One of the newest German tanks in 1939, the Panzer III, was initially equipped with a 37mm gun, but over time this was raised to a 75mm gun, while the infamous Tiger tanks boasted an 88mm gun that proved devastating to most Allied armour. However, the mouse fielded a whopping 128mm Pac-44 main gun, developed specifically to combat the heavier Russian tanks, such as the IS-2, which boasted a 122mm gun. To give a modern perspective, the current US Army M1 Abrams tank is equipped with a 120mm gun. The Pac-44 was designed initially as a field gun, known as the K-44, and utilised a two-piece ammunition arrangement comprising of the 62-pound projectile and a propellant cartridge. The gun could hurl the shell out to a range of nearly 24.5 kilometres, four kilometres more than the gun on the IS-2. While the mouse never took the gun to war, it was fielded by the awe-inspiring Jagdika tank destroyer, the heaviest armoured fighting vehicle to see combat in World War II. According to tank ace Otto Karius, a Pac-44 shell went through the walls of an entire house and destroyed an American tank behind it. Fate of the Goliaths The two working tanks, known as V-1 and V-2, were transferred to the Cummensdorf Army Weapons Office, located some 25 kilometers south of Berlin, after being tested at Boblingen. Meanwhile, in January 1945, Soviet troops in the east had closed to within 100 kilometers of the German capital. With the Soviets racing to Berlin, every available unit capable of fighting was pressed into service, and this included the two tanks. The diesel-powered Maus II was ordered to the bunker at Wunsdorf to protect the German Army's Supreme High Command and was consequently armed for battle. It's believed that the gasoline-powered V1, which had only been tested with a mock turret, was ordered there as well to support V2 if it became stuck or suffered a mechanical breakdown, as there were not any vehicles available capable of towing the V2 the rest of the way. In the end, V1 was abandoned en route and explosive charges detonated inside it in an effort to prevent it from falling into Soviet hands, while V2 would reach the bunker only to be destroyed by its crew as well. After Germany's surrender, the Soviet army were intrigued by the wrecked supertanks and wanted to conduct tests to learn all their secrets. Unable to repair one of the tanks, they rather crudely used six captured German 18T half-tracks to pull the 55-ton turret off the destroyed hull of V2, and then mated it to the gasoline-powered hull of V1 to make one working vehicle. The hybrid mouse was then transferred to the Soviet Union on May 4, 1946 for testing, before being handed over for display at the Kubinka Tank Museum, where it continues to reside. So that's five facts about the biggest and scariest tank ever built during World War II. The Germans' Panzer VIII mouse, 